Hello, 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 and welcome to an easy watercolor mouse with some strawberries. If you don't know me, I am Viv with Art with Viv, and today's project's pretty easy. Just take your time with it and jump right in. Now, I have mixed up my own black today. Um, sometimes I use black out of the tube, but it's really not as pretty or as dynamic as a black that you would mix yourself, and I used a blue and a brown, and I am just outlined his eye. And now I'm coming in with some clean water. And while that outline is still wet, I am just taking that water and blending some of that black up into the eye. I'm making sure that I leave his highlight. You want to leave his little highlight white. Just leave the white of the paper. Now I've got some yellow and I want to just do an underpainting for the strawberry. I love doing yellow underpaintings under red objects or red berries, like raspberries strawberries, cherries, something about that yellow under, under coat or underpainting just makes it glow. So I'm just got my cadmium yellow out here and I am putting that down as my first layer on all the strawberries. I've dabbed up a little bit of it where I got too much because I want to have some highlights on the berry. So I don't want it to be a solid yellow. And then while it's still wet, where I want some darker shadows, I'm going ahead, adding a little bit more of that cadmium yellow, and then just taking a clean, wet brush and blending that down so there's not a hard edge on the shadow. Same thing with this little berry at the top. I don't know what this little mouse is doing in the strawberry patch. Maybe he's maybe he's gonna make him a little strawberry pie. I don't know. You never know what little animals are gonna do or why they're in your strawberry patches or in your vegetable gardens but this little guy has found himself a strawberry that is as big as his head and probably contemplating what he's going to do with it now i've taken a pale brown and i'm just doing a wash over the whole mouse except for his inner ear and his paws i'm leaving those white for now and I just realized I don't have my seeds in my strawberry so I'm just going to take my pencil and just kind of mark those in so that I'll know where some seeds are and I'm looking at a strawberry a reference photo just so that I'll know kind of how to space those seeds and how they look on the real berry but again we're not going for photorealism so I'm not getting too excited about it I'm not going to get my panties all up in a wad and once you have all of your little seeds drawn in, you'll want to come back with some red, a nice juicy red or a rose color, and just cover over that underpainting of yellow. Make sure that your yellow is dry or you will get a lot of orange. They will blend together. Right now you just want to glaze that pinkish color, that rosy color over the orange. And... Um, Make sure that it's dry. Like I said, make sure that yellow is dry. You do not want orange. We, we can have a little orange. That's okay, but we're not trying to get them to mix together on the paper to create orange. We want it to be definitely red berries. So I'm going to do the same thing with this one and just sort of um, wet it down and then start dropping in some deeper color where I want the shadows to be. Now this little berry is not all the way ripe so I'm putting a little green at the tip end over top of that yellow and letting it blend into the red. So I'm just putting a little bit of green down there and I'm going to do the same with this berry. Just cover it with some of the nice pink, pinky rose and make sure that I have a little bit of highlight in there. I'm just going to lift some of that because I got a little too much in there and I want this one to have a highlight as well. So now I am blending some brown with that pink, with that rose. And I'm going to do the inside of this little mouse's ear. I think this, I think this little mouse's name is Henry. I'm pretty sure Henry has found himself a week's load of groceries in this little strawberry patch. So now I'm taking a little bit of a darker, a little bit of a darker brown. I'm doing some strokes, some textured strokes above his eye. He's got a little shadow there and at the tip of his ear. And then I took some clean water and just blended that out um, across, across his ear so that it won't have a hard edge. I don't want it to have a hard edge. I'm adding a little darker brown in there in some of these little 
shadow areas on his ear and I'm making sure that I'm doing sort of um, not sm smooth marks just sort of some erratic sort of fur strokes fur type strokes just little lines and I'm trying to make sure that I'm making my lines going in the same direction that his fur is growing you want to do that because if you make it going a different direction it will not look realistic it will not be convincing that it's a mouse if your fur is going all the wrong way so I'm going to continue with that medium sort of brown it's a little darker than the first wash brown that I put on and just start adding in shadows and blending that out I don't want a lot of hard edges if I do get some I'm not worried about it because at the end I always sort of go over the whole mouse with a little bit of clean water or any animal that I'm painting. I always like to put the tick marks in and put all the brush strokes in, let them dry completely, and then at the end I go over with a damp brush that has clean water on it and that seems to just knock everything back and blend everything and smooth it out. So you'll you'll see that probably toward the end. So now I'm still just adding some shadows to my little mouse with a little darker brown. I've left the tip of his nose pale because he does have a pale tip. Now I'm just blending out that darker mark that I made around the outside of his ears. Actually, I think that's the inside, closest to the inside of his ears, but I'm just blending that out a little bit. I'm just gonna add a little bit more darker paint. And where I think it's getting too like too much of a hard edge or I don't like it I just take some clean water and blend it out so you, you just want to kind of pay attention to what you're painting and how the paints reacting so that you can get in there and you know stop a problem before it happens so be mindful of your paint now I'm just putting a, a light glaze of that medium brown over his opposite ear and down his little forehead so while that is drying, I'm going to let all that dry. I just mixed up some nice green, a pale sort of yellow green, and I'm going to paint in the leaves and the vines and the vegetation. So. And I'm just doing just the first sort of, the first layer of the green. We're going to add more darker greens for the shadows. I'm just sort of blocking it out where I want all my greens to go. And that's just a nice sort of bright yellow green. So a nice little spring green I've got going on. get all that green in there I'm coming back to that black mixture that I used for his eyes and I'm just gonna do some whisker marks some little those little pores that the whiskers grow out of going down his little snout I'm not worried about how you know dark they are because I'm going to lighten them up later and I'm darkening up some of the shadows I've switched over to a smaller brush so that I can get into some of these smaller areas add a another layer of this darker brown just to add some shadows and it starts to give the mouse some shape light and shadows always creates the shape of an object so if you get the light and shadows and the values how light or dark it is generally you can make a convincing shape so I've mixed a little bit more of the brown with that black mixture to get an even darker brown. And I am going in where I see some of the darkest shadows on the little mouse and just adding that to it with just some little tiny fur marks, some little, just some little tiny brush strokes. I'm not making them even, they're very uneven. I am trying to follow the way that his fur is growing. I'm looking at um, the reference photo to make sure I've got his strokes the the first strokes going in the right direction if you are a member of um, if you are a member of my sweet art squad it's only five dollars a month you would get the reference photo the outline drawing the complete supply list along with this 
um, in that group. I mean, it's it's like this price of a coffee. You can hard, and you get four videos a month. That's a little, that's like a dollar, a little more than a dollar a video, a, a lesson. So you get the video, you get the supply list, you get a reference photo, you also get an outline drawing you can trace, and I also always put in or have started putting in some tips of how to mix your colors and where to put the colors and, and other painting tips because I found that my um, members seem to like that. So back to my little mouse, I'm doing a little bit of a darker brown on his snout. It's a little bit too dark so I'm dabbing it up with paper towel and I'm just gonna come in there with some pinky brown right at the tip um, and let and just kind of blob that in and I'm just blending that out with the tip of my paintbrush I'm gonna put some of this pinky brown on his little paw he is holding on tight to his little strawberry he has found a treasure and he does not want to let it go he is thinking of all the things he can make with this strawberry strawberry pie strawberry cake strawberry and cream although I don't I don't know do my do my strength cream I don't know so now I've gotten that really dark brown which is just that black mixture mixed with a dark brown and I am aligning his little ears again looking at the reference photo he has a little bit of a dark line around these little ears so i'm just putting that in and then i'm taking some clean water and blending it out toward the center of that ear that little ear rim the rim of his little ear and he is starting to look like a cute little mouse he's kind he's shaping up i love the way that the that the mice or whatever animal, whatever you're painting, it seems to like just start developing from the paper. Every layer you put on, it just makes it more and more realistic. And that is just, I don't know, that's just part of the magic, I guess, of art. So now I've got the lighter um, brown, sort of a yellowy brown, and I'm just putting it in some of the lighter areas on the little mouse and around his little eyeball. back to my dark I'm looking I'm looking at the reference photo deciding where those darker shadows would be and putting those in and his little arm underneath has a really dark shadow so I'm just gonna put that in there I've just made a lot of irregular strokes don't worry I'm not gonna leave it like that I will soften it up later I just want to get that texture in there for right now I'm also adding a little bit of a shadow under his chin by using that same dark brown and putting a little tufts of fur going up into the his ears just around his little ears and don't worry we'll blend it all at the end now I'm taking some more of that pinky brown color and I am painting in the shadows on the inside of his ear that little pink ear some little light is shining through it it's translucent it's got a little translucent ear and some light shining through it so we're just putting those shadows in and blending them out with a little bit of clean water so that there's not too many hard edges there's hard edges where they're supposed to be and it's soft where it's supposed to be so I don't know if you can hear my bird. He is cooing away. Dorian is in rare form today. He has cooed all day. Now I'm adding some more shadows with some, some of that darker brown with less black mixed in. It's more of just the pure brown, the pure burnt umber. I'm pretty sure that's a burnt umber color, but you can use whatever dark brown that you have on your palette. It doesn't have to be the same colors I use. You can experiment. Shoot, you can make your mouse purple for all I care. Um, just experiment and see what works and what you like. That's the whole point of expressing yourself creatively. Just, you know, try to get in your shapes and your shadows. It doesn't matter what color they are. As long as you get the value right and the shapes and the shadows in the right spot and the highlights, then it'll still look like a mouse no matter what color you paint it. So I went back in and I did a little bit more um, on those little dots where his whiskers come out because I almost completely obliterated them when I put the dark in decided I didn't like the dark dabbed it back up with my paper towel so I put that in there mm -hmm. 
Now I am just layering up my darks, getting those shadows really dark. Um, I'm going to just sort of blend out this ear a little bit. He needs a little highlight right there, so I've just pulled up some of that brown with my wet brush. Now I've got sort of a pinky gray color, putting in some shadows on that paw. And now I've made a darker green. And I'm just going to come in there and start adding some shadows to that vine and to all of the um, leaves and the little, little caps on the strawberries. So I'm going to let you watch and I will return shortly. Once I get all these little shadows and the little veins in the um, leaves, I'm going to come back and darken up with a deep red some of the shadows on the strawberries. So I'm just taking a really deep red, putting it where I want the shadow, and then just softening those edges with some clean water. So it makes it really easy to do. We don't want hard edges on our berries and I'm just adding a little bit more shadows in some of these where I think they need it. Now I've gotten my pale, the pale brown that I used as the actual under painting, but now I've got it less watery. So it's more concentrated, more paint, less water. And I'm going over just about the whole mouse's face and you see that starts to soften up all those fur marks and blend them together. And where I want it a little darker, I'm just adding a little bit more of that light. It's the lightest brown, but only I have just gotten less water in it, so it's much deeper color than that very first wash. So now I am just sort of softening up his shadows on his arms a little bit, and across behind of his eye, between his ear and his eye, around his little snout, up on his little wrists, and just sort of blending all that together and that starts to soften the mouse up you still see some of that texture of the fur but it just sort of softens him so that and brings everything together unifies it a little better so that he actually looks like he's a little mouse and not just bunches bunches of shadows and highlights slapped down in a mass in a mass that looks like a mouse he actually starting to look like a true little mouse and it it just adds a little extra layer to him and I'm just adding some darker shadows where I need it and on his little snout here I just gonna leave that like that now I'm mixing some white gouache with some of the yellow and I'm gonna add the seeds to the strawberry 
now that they're dry make sure that your your strawberries dry or else your yellow will bleed all over so make sure your strawberries dry mix a little white gouache with your yellow and then just paint in the seeds Once you get your seeds in and they're fairly dry, I'm just taking some white gouache. Um, actually, I'm not, well, it is white gouache, but I'm using Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White, but on the bottle it says it's gouache, so. And I'm circling some of these seeds to give them some highlights here and there. Uh, I don't have the best reference for my strawberries, so some of this I'm just kind of going by imagination. So it's not exactly, but I, I, I like the way it looks, so I'm just going to leave it. And I'm just going to continue to add some little white areas in different spots going around the seeds where I think a highlight might be on the strawberry or, or the strawberries and just kind of dabbing those in. So you can pretty much either get a good reference photo of a strawberry or, you know, use your imagination. And now I'm adding a little bit of white right to his snout, some of that white gouache, and it's fairly watery, and you see it's sort of melting together with that grayish brown color I put underneath, and that gives me the effect that I want. So I'm gonna add some highlights to this little top strawberry with the white gouache, and to this little side strawberry. And I'm just putting them here and there. I'm not really even following a the reference photo I'm just doing it where I think I'm adding a little bit more pink to his ears and the tip of his nose just to brighten those up some now I've got a really 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 deep red and I'm gonna add some shadows to these seeds and inside the highlights and that'll make those highlights pop even more so I'm just taking my deep red and adding the shadows you know the seeds and the strawberry are sort of they're sort of indented into the the flesh and the flesh around the strawberry, around the seed of the strawberry sort of pokes up. So that's the effect I'm trying to get with my light and my shadows. That's what I'm working toward. And where I want even darker shadows, I'm taking this really deep red and I am just working that in there. So I've just sort of blended out some of those reds on top and tried to be really careful where I put my darker shadows and left some of that gouache highlights there so that it gives it a little bit more of a shiny berry look. Once I get through with that, I'm going to go ahead and start shadowing up his little paws with a little pinky brown. So we're going to put those little shadows on his paws. I'm using a number two brush just in case you're curious. It's a really small brush it is a black silver velvet or is it silver black velvet whichever one that's what it is 
and um, I am just getting in those tiny little shadows on his little paw where he is holding on to that strawberry. He done found his treasure. He's thinking about strawberry cheesecake. You know he is. I mean, don't mice love cheese? What's better than strawberry cheesecake? Y'all, I'm getting hungry. I gotta stop. So now I'm just coming back in while it's still a little bit wet in some areas with some of that gouache and a little bit of that red and let them blend together right on the paper. That, that white gouache with a little bit of that red. Just let it blend wet on the paper. And that just gives it a little extra dimension. And now I'm coming back to my dark green. I'm going to darken up some of these shadows on uh, the leaves and the vines. And I'll let you watch that. I get sort of my shadows and my vein work in I'm gonna come back to this darker red and just freshen up some of these shadows that were a little bit lost um, earlier I let the strawberry pretty much dry before I did this while I worked on the green the strawberry was drying so now I'm just adding a little a few more shadows to give it a little bit more just a little bit more texture a little bit more oomph just to give it a little something and I'm sticking to this main strawberry, really trying to get it right. The other strawberries, I'm not, I'm not as interested in making them as realistic because they're just sort of supporting characters. And now that everything is dry, I'm doing it backwards because it's my painting. I am taking a nice sort of pale blue um, and I'm just gonna go ahead and do the background. I like this blue with the brown and the strawberry red. I think it's a really gorgeous blue. And so I am just painting around, around. Most people do their backgrounds first, and that is perfectly fine. I am a rule breaker. I like to do my background whenever I feel like it. Actually, I just wanted to see how it would look without a background, and I really felt like it needed some background. And so I'm just going to put mine on at the end. You don't always have to follow every little rule. I had a student tell me that she was taught that you put the background in first. You do not put it in last. And that probably does make a lot of sense. It makes it easier, it makes it for less mistakes, but that's not how I'm doing it. And I want to encourage you to, to paint the way that you want to paint. Sometimes it'll be successful, sometimes it won't, but you will always learn something. That, I promise you. So I'm just going around and just sort of spreading on this sort of a turquoise blue, and I mixed a little bit of cobalt into it just to give it a little bit, just to cool it down just a tad. It was a bit warm for me, but I like it. I like it. But let's just add a little tiny bit of, of a cool, of a cooler blue just to sort of cool it down a little bit. It was going a little bit toward a warm green instead of a instead of a nice blue. So just cool that down. I'm adding a little bit of a darker aqua blue color, aqua green blue color into that where I want it to be darker at the bottom. 
and I'm doing that while it's still wet so it's just sort of blending all together it's a wet and wet technique is what I'm doing and I am just taking my brush and making sure that I get it around where I want it to be and the water is doing the rest of the work for me some places I want it to be extremely darker so I mixed up even more of a dark color and just putting it in those spots and yes this one most definitely looks better with a background much much better I'm even putting a little background under his little elbow up there and there I think we are almost done he looks really good I'm just blending out some I'm just messing now I'm just doing a little messing work just sort of blending out some areas where I think it needs a little softer touch and then you have it. You have a cute little mouse with his little strawberry that he's going to make some strawberry cheesecake out of. And I hope you enjoyed this. Please hit the subscribe button, share it with a friend, and don't forget to mash the like button as well. I hope you have a good week and I will see you next Monday.